All right, everybody, welcome to the third episode of the Necessity Talk Show. Today, I'm here with a very special guest to me, because not only is this guest my personal friend, someone who I would even call family, basically what I'm trying to say is this nigga's dope and he inspires me to just be great. He inspires me to want to just be better. Uh, without further introduction, ladies and gentlemen, Kid Slim. What's up, y'all? Uh, how you doing, man? That's, that's a beautiful intro. I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Explain yourself. What do you do? We get into a little bit of everything at, at Kid Slim Productions. Now I'm just messing. Uh, I do music. I love music, man. I've been I've been doing it since I was a little kid, and it just it's always followed me in good and bad ways, but. I'll explain if I get some questions. Yeah, man. Explain how you got into it. I actually don't know this story. How did you get into music? Got you. So in middle school, right? Uh, actually, let me go back even further. Elementary school. I moved to Lancaster in second grade. And, you know, not having a lot of friends and a new move, you want to get into something that gets you friends. And I wanted to do mm -hmm. music. I always loved music. Uh, so I want to start playing trumpet. You know, a little nerdy instrument, you know, <laughs> some, some funny stuff. But moving being a little bit on the broker side of things can't afford a rental on that so i never got to actually learn the instrument mm. um then in middle school sixth grade ish uh, i wanted to learn guitar and you know jimmy hendrix my mom listened to a lot of him so i thought like he was like one of the coolest dudes ever and so i wanted to learn electric guitar obviously you don't learn electric guitar you learn guitar first mm -hmm. so my aunt gave me this real old dusty classical guitar <laughs> and i was learning at at the church that we went to um and for lack of better terms, I didn't like the guy that I was learning from. He just wasn't, we didn't mesh well, you know, young black boy, old head white dude. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to, I want to play, you know, rhythm. I want to go. And he's like, you know, <laughs> let's play this church song. And unfortunately I, I squandered an opportunity to learn the instrument, but mm -hmm. uh, really came in seventh grade poetry where, you know, he would write poetry. We did haikus, we did sonnets and things like that. And I learned, you know, I could really just use my voice as the instrument. Like I always liked rap music beforehand. And so like my dad had me growing up on Wayne, uh, go even grimier, Reed Dollars, uh, you know, all the underground stuff like that. But you know, Jay-Z, Jadakiss, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I was like, yo, these dudes are the instrument. And I didn't even realize that until doing poetry, like writing that myself. And then uh, from there it took off. Uh, eighth grade, we started doing Freestyle Friday at the uh, homeroom table. And you know, it wasn't really freestyles. We're in eighth grade, we're not mm -hmm. really trying to freestyle. Well, you know, you write something the night before, you come out, you try and disrespect <laughs> your homie, and then <laughs> that's how it goes. But uh, that's really where I started like writing stuff and was like, oh, I really like doing this. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's like, that's where it started. Cool. Who would you say was like your biggest inspiration that got you into like hip hop? So my dad, not because of he, him doing music himself, but, you know, he put me on all these artists. I mm -hmm. said it, Wayne, Jada, J Z, um, and stuff like that. But um, in terms of influence as the artists themselves, you got J. Cole. I've listened to him since like the come up days and even a little bit earlier than that when he was the therapist. Um, Kendrick Lamar and be able to see how they climbed with their music and elevated and continue to evolve as artists. And then, you know, you got everybody under the sun loves Lil Wayne, you know, mm. half of the artists now are influenced by Lil Wayne. And so, you know, that's a big one too. Hmm. Word. What would you say is like your favorite aspect of being a musician and in your musical process? Oh, uh, let's, I would say, there's a lot of self-satisfaction in it when you do something where like you surprise yourself. Like I don't sing like anything crazy, but like, you know, you get a, a note in a song where you're like, oh, I wasn't even expecting that for myself. Or you get a bar that goes real crazy. You play it to your friends and they're like, oh, yo, you went crazy. It's one of those, it's like a real uplifting feeling because it's just fun to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then getting, you know, the satisfaction of something incredible coming out of it. Yeah, man. What is something that you really want to accomplish with your music? Um, I want to be able to touch people. Uh, that sounds really fucking <laughs> bad. But in a way, you know, in the heart, you know, a lot yeah. of music, uh, 
like got to me in times of need. I don't know if y'all can see this on camera, but uh, I've got this tattoo of a Kendrick Lamar song. It's I. And um, the song I came out at a time I was, you know, really depressed. And like mm -hmm. music always hits me in that like time period. Mm -hmm. I need it often enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, more recently, uh, Kendrick Lamar had dropped Mr. Morale, had a whole therapy session of music, therapy yeah. session of music, and like that really spoke to me. A lot of things that I don't talk about because you know, a lot of men in general don't talk about their mm -hmm. problems. Real niggas don't need therapy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he said it, and yeah. so it's like he really just went out there and talked to a therapist, but mm -hmm. to the people, like you need to do this for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And then another uh, reference, savior, I can't save you, mm -hmm. but, you know, save yourself, learn, you know, what you need to do for yourself. Yeah. And so, like, music just hits people all different types of ways. Um, another quick example is, like, Mac Miller. Like, I really loved Mac Miller. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had never got to see him before he passed, like, um, in a concert or anything like that. But his mm -hmm. music still touched my soul, my spirit like that. And it's really cool mm -hmm. to just think, like... You know, you could have the potential to do that for people. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's that's real. That's real right there. What would you say is like, uh, are, are you strictly trying to just stay in like to the hip hop genre or are you willing to branch out and try and touch other genres? Uh, it really depends on where the avenues come from, because like I am very hip hop rap focused, but, you know, getting vocal training i might be able to sing a little more going towards the r b i listen to r b i like a lot of r b artists uh ari lennox is a uh yeah. Giveon, you know a couple good artists but it's not what they say is a lane and that's not my lane at the moment just because mm -hmm. i don't sing often so practicing getting into that could branch me off into any you know kind of avenue um one of my other favorite artists jid did i don't know really to call it pop but the song enemy for like league of legends and yeah. like even the whole gaming industry getting my music in the gaming industry is a high goal for me because like a game that's mm -hmm. something really awesome like imagining my own song that other people are listening to while they're gaming no matter what mm -hmm. is going on cyberpunk 2077 asap rockies and yeah crazy stuff man i'll say one of my favorite moments from like uh gaming is a moment that involved music. It's in uh, the game Saints Row 3, when you I jump out the one. helicopter and you have to take out the the whole enemy's tower. And the whole time, Kanye West's power is playing in the background. That's and, a moment yeah. in gaming, man. And it, it, because, I feel like because it, like, it could have so easily just been in a whole nother level. But because the fact that they added that aspect of music and like not even just music, but music from like an artist with powerful lyrics, you know, I feel like it just took it to that whole next level it really did that's a that's a really good point and that's a good level too i love that one and it's just like it seems like it hits the beats right on key when you're doing mm -hmm. you know the mission like you're you've dropped from the plane you go in and it's like the verses are hitting at the right time unless you're you know, yeah. messing around and you're just wasting the song time but yeah point being yeah yeah great great level design uh shout out to the people who made saints row uh but yeah, what would you say is like your process going into making music? Do you look for beats first or do you write lyrics first and then find beats or do you make beats? Um, so I'm starting to get into the space of trying to make beats, but um, more often than not, I might write a lyric or two, like a bar or two down and have the idea, then go for a beat that fits the idea and then bounce back and write a verse. There's sometimes I have a verse written for some beat and it just, it, I don't think it actually fits. So I look for more beats and then be able to, you know, flip the verse into a new rhythm, a new life into it sometimes. It's really a, a mishmash of how I make things because the creative process just comes to me. Mm -hmm. It's like if I'm in one zone, I'm writing to a beat. If I'm in another, the beat needs to, you know, find the lyrics I already have. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's crazy. Yeah. What would you say is like, uh, is like one of the most important aspects of your music to you. I think being able to hear double meanings or, you know, even in a long winded sentence, mm -hmm. what something actually would mean if you thought about it in the music, because there's oftentimes people just listen to stuff, you know, especially in the day and age of like TikTok for the beat, you know, the beat carries mm -hmm. a lot of artists and that's not a bad thing. You know, if you are, you know, good on the beat and you fit it and the song is catchy or sounds good that's what's good for it but being able to write lyrics that 
resonate with people on top of being able to fit whatever rhythm you're going to Mm -hmm. is big for me. What would you say is like one of the most important aspects of music, not even just for you, but for like, you know, people in general? Why, why, Why is music important to you? Music's important to me because I feel like it is a way that we are able to not only speak our problems, but speak our happinesses, our truths, our failures, our loves, our, you know, sicknesses, like you are able to voice the world within music, not just yourself, but like, you know, you get to point your out view, uh, your worldview, you know, what's going on in your home. Uh, like I said, Kendrick with his therapy session, what's in your mind. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a lot of being able to tell stories true or false but always try to be as true as possible for me at least personally Hmm. yeah that's real where's a place that music has taken you that you wouldn't have expected it to take you i got to go to a small little like music conference you know about 10 25 people um but with some very kind of important like figureheads in the music community locally here at lancaster and so um it was actually going to harrisburg because like lancaster county area Um, But being able to see all them perform kind of inspired me to like keep going because like, you know, there's going to be that day where I'm on that stage with them. There's going to be that day where we all share our successes together. Mm -hmm. And so um, just being able to keep going into new places because, you know, a lot of people don't leave their hometown. And so like being able to go to Philadelphia where I was born, I don't go there that often, but like go Mm -hmm. there to do music, to be able to go to another state next time to do music, to eventually be able to travel overseas and do music would be amazing for me. What do you think is, what do you think about the current state of uh, modern music? I brought it up before, like TikTok, you know, you get that short blurb of music and sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, you stumble onto something really great. And sometimes, you know, that 15 minute or 15 second blurb or however long is the music and, you know, give or take what you think about it. Music will always be very important in everything, not even just rap hip hop, but, you Mm -hmm. know, music for intros to TV shows, music Mm -hmm. for commercials, like music is such a figurehead and the world for things in general like you you normally like even if you're on a car ride most people will put on the radio instead of listen to silence just driving so yeah. like music is just important it's just music itself is human nature mm-hmm. so like to be able to be a part of that is really cool for me yeah man that's dope where do you see yourself going with music i would love to go overseas uh be able to perform for people there um, be able to help the community out, um, you know, with events and stuff. A uh, friend of mine had recently did a the ripple effect and they did like a food drive behind that. And that's really cool. And, you know, inspired me to think of the positive actions that I could do behind bringing, you know, music to people. Mm-hmm. So that'd be really good to help people and, you know, do uplifting things for the community I grew up in. Word. Yeah. You mentioned like... Uh helping the community that you grow up in. Do you feel like uh, a lot of the people who are making music today, do you think they, do you think they're doing enough for the community? I'm really 50-50 on that um, because you see really good examples of when people do and you see really good examples of when people don't. And I don't really have a, like the full breadth of knowledge to say I see enough people do it but I can't say I don't see people doing it. Like, um, you know, plenty of artists will go back to the city and donate money and that's good and all. Um, but be able to take like the, the further action of like, all right, I'm going to just spend my money to build something, not just donate it, you know? And Mm -hmm. so like, it's, it's really hard to say that's a hard, you know, answer for me. I wouldn't be able to give you one. How would you describe kid slim sound? Kid slim sound. Um, I like to say I'm romancing with a little bit of old school hip hop where the lyricism still is really important, but being able to give it like that new punchy sound. um, I like a lot of punchlines. I like to make, like I uh, brought up earlier, a lot of double meanings in some lyrics. Uh, I don't know. You just got to listen and find out. (laughs) Word, word, word. Uh... Yeah, what's one of your favorite tracks that you've made? Uh, it's an unreleased one. I just recently uh, 
had recorded it, um, but it's going it's go- going to be called Thinking, and it's where one of those songs where I kind of take myself to that new like so- sort of side lane, like still a lot of like bars, punchy lyrics. But um, kind of like I'll call it the bridge. It's not really a hook, but the bridge where I sing just a little bit, try to you know break that little mm-hmm. level every time I make a new song. Um, but it's really about like you know what are you thinking about? Because that's a lot of what question is what people are thinking of when they think of you. Like when you're making music, like all right, you know when you make this song, what are you thinking about? When you do this, what are you thinking about? Mm-hmm. So the bridge kind of is like what am I thinking about? What am I thinking about? I could be thinking about and then yeah, but you gotta listen to that one too that's a good one word 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 i'm excited for that one yeah what what is like uh what what are some other artistries that go into the inspiration for you to make your music um so i used to draw a lot in school and so like literal art just being able to draw um i drew a concept for what i'll call the mixtape and so I actually gave it to a friend who does tattoos and like so he draws for a profession essentially. Um, but being able to give him the concept is helping him make the album cover or the mm-hmm. mixtape cover in a more proficient way. Cause if you know, you just start, you know, jabbering out, I want this, this, this on the cover, it could come out like anything. But if you have the inspiration yourself, and you know, I'm not a great artist, but I am a decent, you know, drawer. And so you draw. You give them that concept and then they build something very great out of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, pen art in general. Um, Some of it is, you know, a lot of people do the flaunt and flashy and I'm not really that kind of guy. I've always been like low key laid back. And so like personality is a big part of music in general. Mm -hmm. But to be able to understand what your kind of personality is and throw that throughout the words, throughout the lyrics, throughout the art. And that's going to show up on the uh like the cover art too, like mm-hmm. to be able to pronounce that in multifaceted ways, who you are through your music. Yeah, man. Yeah. What would you say is like, uh, would you say the production is as important, if not more important, or would you say that production goes like, where, where do you see production in this, in like, uh, as it goes alongside with like the, the music and the rapping? Like, okay. um, if you understand my question. No, I do. Okay. Um, me personally, it's 50 50. Mm-hmm. Um, you cannot have good music without both. Mm-hmm. Now, you can have an uh, amazing beat and not so great lyrics, and it'll still go off somewhere because a lot of people like things like that. And then you have, you, you know, you can call them self proclaimed hip hop heads that have been listening to people that are just strictly about the lyrics. But if you have good lyrics and the beat is, I don't know, for lack of better terms, terrible Mm -hmm. nobody's going to want to listen to it even if you're the best lyricist in the world so you still have to have great production behind it so it's a even 50 50 split for me if you're not doing one thing actually i'll call it 100 100 if it's not a 100 percent on the production and 100 percent on the lyrics it's not going to fly for me Mm -hmm. when you're writing a song do you usually work on like one song all the way through or do you like take your time like write maybe like a quarter of a, a verse one day and like come back to it or does it all usually just flow out? Um, that's a good question. Um, there are days where I sit and I s- schedule and dictate a specific amount of time. I want to write the song specifically for this beat or you know, I want to find a beat for that song specifically. And there are also days where I'm just inspired, something comes up and I just start writing and then I'm like, all right, I I didn't lose the inspiration, but like I wrote a verse. I don't want to push it and try to force something that doesn't feel natural to the song. So you just take a break you go and come back to it another day in the midst. It could be, say, three days in between the start of one song and another. But I wrote another song in between that. Mm -hmm. And so it's really you let it come to you. And if you force yourself more and more, that's where I find myself closer to writer's block because you don't want to push yourself too hard where you're not inspired. Mm-hmm. You're just forcing it. You're, you're, you know, it's, it's, it's eventually to become work, but you don't want to work an 80 hour job and not get the 80 hour, you know, worth that you feel. So mm-hmm. you pace yourself. Heard. Yeah. What would you say is the most fun aspect of it to you? The finished product. It's always the finished product. Mm. It's like you you hear that finally completely coalesce. No, you know what? I lied. I, I say the finished product, but it's the process of like right after the lyrics are finished and you start 
like adding the layers, you know, the sound you want out of it. Cause you know, like you can, you know, rap on a beat and do absolutely nothing to it. And mm -hmm. that doesn't really resonate with people. You want to add, you know, ad libs, you want to add vocal changes or, you know, inflections and things like that. And learning that myself has been really a fun process. Mm -hmm. I've been very much enjoying that. What has your growth been like as an artist? I'm bringing it right back to that last question too. Um, I get, I don't want to say I get called monotone. I do it to myself. I call myself monotone um, just because a lot of when I was early, like making music, I didn't really have anybody backing me, nobody supporting me. So I didn't have anybody saying this doesn't sound like you want it to sound and I know you can do better. I know you can do this or bring this up, bring this down, um, change, you know, how you're saying a word to make it fit better on beat or something like that. And so being able to check my own growth with now friends, family, people that are supporting me behind has been one of the like greater aspects of making music. Mm -hmm. That was a great interview. Hey man. And I'm glad that you were able to come and just, you know, be a part of this and just, you know, tell your story a little bit, man. Yeah. I'm glad that you had me. Yeah. Where can people find your shit at? Uh, currently, all my music's on SoundCloud. I have a couple songs on Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, you just look up the name Kid Slim with two M's. Uh, that'll be how you find me. I currently have a release coming up in uh, that's going to be called Confliction. Uh, I think it's going to be 12 songs. There might be a bonus one or two. I'm not too sure, but I have the 12 songs slated for it. Um, and then after sometime within 2023 i also have another ep coming out called adult slim oh shit <laughs> you heard it here first got Damn, the I ain't drop like a curse on i was i was uh, oh yeah you i was curbing say, myself you can bro. say whatever the hell you want to say on here it's, i'm not going now it's too late it's but. too late you know we're gonna keep it pg sesame street the, uh, the music is not PG Sesame Street. I'll say that not, much. Yeah. But um, I'm I'm also that's another thing. I'm working on being able to extend my vocabulary just a little past that. But sometimes they call them um, word sentence enhancers, as mm. SpongeBob uh, would say. <laughs> but sometimes you know it's that's an emotion that you really need to punch out. It's yeah. like you know sometimes you really just need to say fuck you stub your toe and fraggle fraggle is not going to get that energy back out you know it's just yeah fuck, and that's it but word appreciate it bro thank you for coming on the show thanks for having me of man of course ah peace out perfect